No, no time. No, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't have any time. Welcome everyone to the February 2023 DSC Community Call. It's, it's been an exciting few months. I look at that. Uh, Gail showing off his uh, his lovely DSC um, hoodie. There, it looks warm. Um, so uh, to no, today we uh, we are we joined by Demetrius. I don't see him on the call yet. Yes, we do. We do. Yeah, hey, we are, we're doing, joined by Demetrius. We're gonna, because Demetrius is going to got to jet away in 35 minutes. We're going to jump straight in, but we have had some releases over the last uh, few minutes. We obviously been working on a bunch of stuff. Um, the two releases that I know uh, that are currently been working on, there was Storage DSC 5.1 came out that um, added support for selecting the disks um, by serial number and um, by GUID. Uh, so you can, that supports more Azure scenarios now. Um, computer management, can't remember off the top of my head, but that is 9.0, it's another breaking change. Had, that went out just, it's just going out now. Um, that's been sitting in preview for, for a few months. Um, so check those out. Any, Johan, any releases on your side? I have one as well. Uh, okay, uh, we have. Okay, Go there's a pre release of update services DSC. Um, there was, I think, bug fixes mostly about uh, language settings. I don't know the details anymore, but uh, update service update services DSC has been updated. It's just a pre release, not a full release. Awesome. And yeah, yeah and Johan? Yeah, a config manager CB DSC also released uh, version four. Uh, then there's just a few preview releases. Um, SQL Server DSC, we're going to re release that uh, eventually. It's up in preview 17 now. So but we have to fix uh, things with uh, class based resources before we release it. Uh, I haven't had time. But soon. So if you, awesome. Well, hey, look, if you are waiting for any releases and your fix or, or patch or feature is in preview and you need that in final before we can use it let a, let the let them uh, maintain a no often we keep these in preview for a little bit longer than, than we should so um just prompt us um but let's it, it, any announcements uh, gail on your side in regards events coming up you are the events guy you, the, <laughs> yeah next week we um I'm going to London for the PowerShell Days UK, so we're doing PSD UK next uh, next week, and then the others uh, usual suspects. There will be the PowerShell Conference Europe uh, in June, in Prague, and then there's also. Um, but I need from someone from the US to help me with the dates. There's also the PowerShell and DevOps Summit um, in Bellevue that will be in I believe April. I can't remember the exact dates. But uh, oh, we'll go. put the links later. Yeah, put the links. Awesome. Um, Jody, after after Demetrius is, is going to do his bit, Jody is going to stick around. Hopefully, thanks, Jody, and share a little bit of some of the de the updates um, on her side. But yeah, let's. Demetrius, are you ready to kick off? You bet. So I'll give kind of a little bit of an intro, and then I'll let John do a demo here. Um, last time around, we talked a little bit about the DSC resources that we're building for Winget so that you can manage your both user and administrative settings. And we've been working on a DSC resource that will help bootstrap Winget and get it into a good state. Um, we're still doing a little bit of work there. We've got some fun with one of our dependencies that we're not thrilled with how it's packaged. So we're still doing some work on that. And uh, a new issue was added fairly recently by the Power Toys team. Um, where they're saying, hey, Winget is great for installing stuff, but I've got a few more things I'd like to be able to do in terms of configuration. So we've started looking at the work, um, working with PowerShell team, Steve Lee and Jason Helmick and a few others there, looking at having Winget act as a local configuration manager and being able to run invoke DSC resource. Um, but what we're looking at is a declarative file that we'll parse to figure out what resources need to be run and what the properties are. So with that, I will hand it over to John and let him do a demo. Amazing. Hi. Um, I guess, let's see. 
share this screen. Uh, quickly, I guess you mentioned the resources. I don't know. I don't have like, a, what's the right way to demo a resource? <laughs> Um, other than walking through what's in it. Um, yeah, we added the, the, the user settings. It, can you make it a little bigger? Uh, yes, if I can figure out. Nope, control doesn't work. All right, Visual Studio Code. Actually, how do I make Visual Studio yeah, Code? Yeah, control Zoom. plus. Control plus, yep. Oh, con uh, I just tried control scroll and it didn't work. Is that good? Yep. All right. Perfect. Um, so yeah, we had the user settings resource, um, which is basically just lets you set the all the JSON. The admin settings, again, there's just a handful of these. Um, the sources is similar, although I think we need to actually work on this one a little bit in terms of our layout. Uh, and then the package is the big one of actual package management, where you can specify the package you want, the version you want, where it comes from, whether to get it or get rid of it. Um, if I, again, I don't really know what the best way to <laughs> to show off a resource is. So if someone has questions. So how do you use that? So basically, you have you have resources for uh, Wingit package. So I guess yep. you just ensure that the package is uh, present in this case, looking at the code, and then yep. you say so. You just provide the information and say, I want all of those packages installed. Mm -hmm. Please make it so. Yep. And then Wingit makes it so. Correct. So so you can just you can just provide it like a bunch of packages you want to have installed and then everything else will get uh, winget will just apply it using dsc is that correct correct oh so i think yeah go ahead. oh go ahead if you had no there, there's daniel with a question so he's got his hands up uh, yeah uh, hey look I, I thought i'd raise my hand yeah and also obviously this is going to deploy packages is there also a way for you to say i the state should be that this particular package isn't installed and i guess the other thing would be can we enforce or pin a specific version of a package as well and i'm i'm assuming those are the definite but those are you know so questions people have the you can definitely select a, a version in here and you can use the ensure to ensure absent to remove it um the when you say pin, I don't know if you're referring to our sort of new feature that's coming in that is actually having Winget pin the package version so it won't it won't attempt to update it. Or if you meant pin as in you can select a version in the DSC resource. I actually meant the the latter, but the former sounds awesome as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I have the exact yeah, the former sounds awesome if you if you're planning to do that as well. So yeah, the the version selection, it'll if if the version happens to be higher, we will uninstall and reinstall because it's not always safe to just downgrade. Um, and sometimes the, the installers won't even do it. And then if it's newer, it will update. If it happens to match, you know, tests should succeed and we won't do anything. And so this will, of course, store, install packages from the Microsoft Store as well, if, if available. Correct. Unfortunately, they do not yet give us the version numbers. We continue to push on them to give us version numbers of the packages, but right now we don't have that, so we can't really specify. If you if you specify a version, we can usually detect if it is the current one, but we don't know what's going to happen when we install from the store. So it's basically we we try it and hope that the version you wanted is the one that happened to be there. Um, so. So it will automatically install the latest version on the store if you if so if it detects if the DSC resource detects that oh it's not the right version, then you say okay install it from the store and that's going to be taking the latest on the mm. store correct. Actually, I'm not. I didn't write it, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. But I think maybe if you specify okay. a version from the store, it may actually fail because we don't know what the version is. So we might just get into a state of. We don't want to do the wrong thing, so let's not do anything. 
Okay. I think that's I think that's going to be the behavior, and we've gotten partial support out of the store for the Win32 packages. Um, it is in one of the endpoints in the REST API. Unfortunately, oh, it's not the one we use to do our version comparison logic. So we've asked them to add that um, for the Win32 side on the sort of legacy packaged apps from the store. Right now, there's no mechanism for us to get the version there. We've been asking that, and that is sort of a very long pull item for that that leads into lots of really, really old legacy code. Good, okay. So I guess what this looks like sort of rolls into the configuration stuff that Demetrius was talking about. And I have a sample fire file here. Using some of these settings, this schema is totally <laughs> uh, malleable still. So, you know, uh, don't don't take it as gospel. Um, but here's the actual install a package. If you want good old Notepad++, just give it the ID, give it the source, and off it can go. Um, unfortunately, because I put this all together at the last minute and the and I just made this work last night. <laughs> Some of these things yeah. are failing. Yeah, but... this is this is very hot off the presses. Yeah. It's not checked into Winget CLI yet. It will show up as a PR probably in the next week or so. Um, and then we'll be able to start sharing more of this where you can actually go grab these bits and play with it yourself. So this is the configure command in Winget. We're working on the PowerShell module as well, so don't don't can feel you make that bad. one bigger as well, please? Oh the, okay. the window. Yeah, it is. Uh yeah, sorry. Let's make the window bigger as well. Just do this. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that just, you know, sort of spits out what we're going to do. It actually is pulling uh, information from the local modules. It'll pull it from the gallery as well uh, if it needs it to tell you what it's going to do. Again, these are all failing. I just wanted to run it. <laughs> so if I say yes, it's going to do that, unfortunately. Some yeah, other okay. problems. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it work in progress, right? But yep. it's good to see that. So that means um, basically what Winget is, it let me, I'm just trying to understand from what you've just shown, like um, Winget can apply resources based on what you give, and then the resources can be Winget package. And the Winget package can just say, hey, make sure this is installed. So you have the package, and then what kind of, other resources will be supported. So I guess if you install Visual Studio Code or if you install Git, maybe you want to do some other things, configurations. Yeah. Uh, is there any other scenario you think about supporting or maybe you you plan on supporting early? Um, I, I think the initial use case that we're looking at is um, specifically kind of targeted at um, projects that are in Git repositories. So the idea is you could build one of these configurations. It will know about the tools and the configurations that need to be applied so that you can actually get your machine into the state you want it to be in to work on that project. But clearly, if you wanted to create a configuration for yourself where you're saying, hey, this is how I want my machine to be configured, you would be able to run that file as well. So you know, if you think about you know, Mac and Linux with dot files, this would be kind of a similar kind of a concept where you can say, hey, this is how I want my machine, and you run that configuration, and any DSC resource would be something that could be pulled in. You know, we're still working on a lot of the governance and security concerns that enterprises are going to have, but you'll be able to go in and, and make things work so that you can just use, you know, whatever resources you want, PowerShell Gallery, Wild West, have a great time. Nice. Yeah, so, so it, it will pull a local... Um, if you just have a, a resource that you've implemented locally, it's not in the gallery, it will use it. If it's not local, it'll go to the gallery to try to find it, um, install and and carry forward, as long as you, of course, agree to the non-final uh, legal contract that we have there. Um, so, yeah, go, I think, Daniel, did you have a question? Yeah, do, do, you, do you guys see this as used as, as more of a desktop configuration tool or also on the server side where, you know, you you know, say Windows Server um, core, 
you might not have a UI, but you need a bunch of tools installed. Do you see that being a use case as well? Yeah, we've had some interesting challenges getting support on Windows Server SKUs. Um, I think the the biggest challenge we've had is that typically the store is not enabled on Windows Server SKUs, so there's no way for us to kind of service or update ourselves. Um, so that was kind of where a lot of this stuff actually sort of originated was we needed a mechanism that was reliable to get Winget onto a system. And we went down the path of building a DSC resource to do that. Um, that's some of the work that we've got. And we've actually published that at, at uh, Winget CLI, but it's still got some rough edges on it. But we're looking at, at that as a possible way to get Winget onto Windows Server and to be able to upgrade it from there as well. So that's kind of what we've been looking at for being able to say, hey, we can support Winget on Windows Server. Um, there's still some challenges with Server 19 where app execution aliases are not available. So that poses some interesting challenges. Um, but on Server 22, um, largely it works. It's just a matter of us saying it's experimental because we just don't have a reliable mechanism yet that's publicly available for you to get when get on Windows Server and be able to make sure that it's working. My hope is that we get some mileage on the DSC resource that ends up proving to be a reliable way to get an update when get on server. And then hopefully we'll be able to change that positioning and say, hey, yep, we're supported on server. Here's the approved method provided by Microsoft for doing that. I will say as far as the configuration through DSC resources, as long as the DSC resource works on server, I do expect the configuration part to work, if that makes sense. Yep. So we, in in theory, we should be able, even without the Windows Store, we should be able to use this in our DSC configs. Um, you know, we need a, if we need Git installed, even if we don't have the store, we're still able to use this, right? Yes. As long as WinGet's bootstrapped, I guess is the, we need the WinGet to be bootstrapped on server. Is WinGet Correct. currently? You, gotcha. Okay. The, well, so for the configuration part, using the DSC resources, that is just going to be a module standalone no Winget specific dependency. You could then use that to bootstrap Winget via the resources that we're <laughs> building <laughs> Yep. to gotcha. then provide that uh, capability to use those Winget DSC resources, but you could use arbitrarily other DSC resources as well. Yep, and if you already had an investment in Chaco or Scoop or something else, we're expecting those resources will be able to work just as well. So this is not about, hey, we're shoving Winget down your throat. You have to use Winget to install and manage things. If you've already got some resources that work and do what you need them to do, we just want to be able to extend and embrace that. Awesome. And I and I think from kind of early discussions where we've started looking at things, we've run into all kinds of fun. So, for example, building that configuration for Power Toys, they leverage the Wix installer. And right now, we don't allow Wix into the community repository because it won't install without dependencies. So we've actually got an engineer that's doing some work through our experimental dependency feature to turn on Windows features so that we can get the .NET framework enabled. And then we'll add Wix as a sort of reference package for that mechanism. And hopefully that will unblock us so that we can actually build a configuration that will do all of the magic necessary so that you could actually run the configuration, launch Visual Studio, and then hit F5 to build Power Toys. And then we'll start working on some of the other projects under Microsoft. And hopefully we'll get some support with other open source projects where we'll build some configurations and test them and open PRs. And hopefully they'll be willing to adopt that. Um, I think we'll be building a handful of DSC resources that sort of don't exist that are needed. And my hope is that we can do that open source under DSC community. You know, we'll certainly contribute the, you know, the initial proof of concept or hack together version of it. And then hopefully the community will start seeing the value and we'll get more attraction to building and maintaining DSC resources and really help grow this community rather than just trying to reinvent the wheel or go somewhere else. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. So so what what's the time frame you your your team is looking? Because I, I see obviously you mentioned the PRs coming through. Are they coming through in the next sort of month or so? Yeah, I think we'll have CLI? Yeah, I think we'll have something that you can sort of use as a as a self-host example from the open source repository, you know, probably next month or so we'll have our next release out once we've, you know, knocked the obvious bugs off of the golden path here. Um, and I think it'll probably stay as an experimental feature in Winget for the next release that's probably, you know, April, May timeframe. 
Um, and then after we get sort of more of that community feedback, we we lock on a more reliable schema with uh, the configuration format and we're partnering with PowerShell on that. We'll start seeing more of this becoming broadly available and we'll hopefully start seeing more people looking to adopt the technology. Fantastic. What else do you need any help from the community? What else? What can people do if they want to get involved or support or try it out, etc.? As soon as we have a release out there, um, I'll be looking for help on sort of guidance and documentation, um, best practices on building resources, how to contribute to that stuff. Like, you know, when I go look at Microsoft Docs today, honestly, if you know what DSC is and how to build it, they're great. But if you've never seen anything like this before, it's a very daunting process. So I really want to make sure we've got some solid documentation on, you know, hey, you heard about this cool Winget configure thing. How do you get started? Um, I think there's going to be a lot of discoverability challenges around, um, you know, does a particular resource map to some specific package ID in Winget or Chaco or Scoop? So I think there's going to be some opportunity to try to figure out how we enrich the metadata so that it, it's easier for somebody that knows what they want to install to find the resources that will configure it. Um, and, you know, and I think it's very much from my point of view, you know, we're happy that we're open source and to help track issues and, and cross link things. Um, you know, and I, and I think it'll be a process. We'll probably want to create a repository somewhere where we can just kind of track issues where people are saying, hey, I need to be able to configure this thing and I could really use some help finding or building the resource. Awesome. And you mentioned documentation, Mikey courses. <laughs> I wonder if Mikey, you're, <laughs> you're working on this or you this. You're muted, Mike. Yeah, I took myself off mute uh, right after I said a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Shot you can Mikey always in. reach out to me. Uh, so I had been uh, focused on retooling the V2 DSC docs is where a lot of my attention has been the last couple of months. Um, actually working on a doc right now for uh, machine configuration. Um, but uh, if there's, if you have suggestions, ideas, thoughts, concerns, particularly stuff that doesn't work, is rough, whatever, um, I need you to tell me when those things pop up. Right, uh, because prior to this, I also spent five years writing the equivalent of DSC resources for Puppet. My brain is extremely tuned in to CM, uh, and it is extremely hard for me to put myself back in the I have no idea what any of this is lens. Right. Um, so my focus recently has been because the only people who are using V2, broadly speaking, are people who are coming from machine config, in which case they figured out what they wanted to do going through that route or people who are looking to upgrade from V11. So my focus has really been on authoring resources and, and cleaning that up. I think those docs are better now than they used to be, uh, but I wrote them, so what do I know? Uh, <laughs> I am, I am not a neutral observer, um, but seriously, um, if uh, there's stuff that you think, hey, we need a document on, you know, this particular topic or, you know, what is CM, why is CM, um, I'm, extremely happy to put those in the backlog uh, and to start working on them. Um, I uh, am super duper interested in the work that's happening over uh, on the Wingate side of the house for this. Uh, I've been very excited and it's been hard to keep my mouth shut. Uh, so <laughs> I'm stoked to see a, a public preview. <laughs> yeah, we're we're pretty excited about it. And um, I haven't really updated the, the Wingate roadmap yet. I'll, at some point, I'll probably go in and, and mark this as a strategic investment if we start seeing people showing some real interest here to help kind of prioritize some of this work over some of the other things that we're doing. Um, but right now it, it's been sort of exploratory and proof of concept type stuff. And and wow, you know, there's already kind of a configuration management solution in place. Let's see if we can make this work on the client. Let's see if we can make Winget work on server. Let's work with PowerShell team and really, you know, enrich that investment. And you know, we're hoping that this is going to help influence some of the direction that V3 goes. And ultimately, I think this configuration schema really should be a PowerShell V3 type of a schema so that the PowerShell team is really driving it. And it's not just limited to Winget is the only thing that can run these. It really needs to be, you know, however you want to leverage DSC, you should be able to get the benefits out of all of this. 
Nice, awesome. So we should get you guys back in a in a couple of months, right? And um, <laughs> and get you to get you to uh, share an update and take us through where you're at and um and what we can do next. Absolutely. And uh, I've been talking with uh, um, uh, going blank now, um, Jason about um, doing something at the upcoming North America conf, and um, my uh, my personal CFO, my wife, has uh, agreed to let me go to. EU. So we're working on dates and uh, getting ready to book that trip. It's going to be on my own dime because of budget stuff. So uh, I'm going to call it a, a week vacation in Prague. And I'll just be uh, speaking at the conference and embarrassing everybody with my lack of PowerShell knowledge. So I'm looking forward to it. That sounds awesome. Fantastic. Amazing. Well, so, so yeah i mean any any uh, any other things you want to share and otherwise uh, it sounds like you guys have almost uh, you know you um we're very excited to see where things go next um and i think we're right on time for you to make your next meeting perfect i appreciate it if awesome if people have if people have questions where can they reach out to you can you drop um, maybe you, your contacts you can ping me on twitter you can email me i'll i'll put all my stuff in the chat here so awesome. fantastic and and thanks john as well for 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 sharing the your code your demo i'm sure everyone wants to dig jump straight in <laughs> um and and start messing around with it so fantastic yeah for, for john and well and Demetrius, if you have any question if you want to know things about the community feel free to reach out to us we meet every six weeks and otherwise everyone here usually well, many people yeah, are usually also on uh, the PowerShell Slack or PowerShell Discord. There's a DSC channel where we hang out, and then you can ask questions, and you should get answers pretty quickly in there. Fantastic. Um, I think I think my biggest ask is going to be kind of around some of the documentation stuff. Um, I really want to make sure we get things really crisply kind of broken down into the different areas and take the approach of somebody's never seen or done this before. How do we hold their hand? Um, so a lot of what I'm doing internally, I'll call it dog fooding. I've got kind of an internal wiki. I'm reaching out to some other teams once we have this out at Winget CLI and we've got the, the 0 0.1 JSON schema for the configuration. And what I plan on doing is just asking other teams, hey, build the configuration. We're not going to help you use the docs. If you can't figure it out, then we need to fix the docs. And then as we do those improvements, we'll we'll go through the next teams. We're working with our documentation person and we'll definitely work with Mikey on this as well so that we kind of cover all the bases everywhere and the hope is that you know by the time this stuff goes out sort of more GA it's a it's a no-brainer and you've got all the guidance that you need regardless of where you know what your current technology and skill sets and backgrounds are perfect Excellent. so I've got to drop off and join my next meeting but uh, feel free to reach out if you have any other questions and I'd say generally speaking, just uh, interact at GitHub. That keeps everything open source and keeps everybody engaged. Fantastic. Well, awesome. Well do. Thank you. Okay, should we Jody, are you about? Do you wanna do you wanna um jump on in and and give us a bit of an update? <laughs> yeah, totally. So just a couple of updates from our end um, that are mainly around the new module release and the new extension release. Um, so newest version of our agent is 1.2948. And with this, you can now uh, you can now leverage built-in Windows PowerShell modules as well as community resources um, that are not necessarily imported into, into your config. So uh, a big win here is going to be able to use Windows feature. Um, and we're really excited because uh, we know that this has been a, a gap for DSC users for, for quite a while on machine config too. Um, with this latest extension release also, we now support uh, additional parameter types in addition to strings. So now you can leverage strings, integers, booleans, and doubles. Um, and all that's required is the latest extension version, which again, I'll put in the chat as 1.2948, um, and then the latest GC module, which is 4.3. So with that, we've got some really great examples that are going to be coming out 
uh, in the next month or so um, to ArcBox and in the Arc Jumpstart guides. I'm not sure if folks here have, have tried out ArcBox before, but a lot of really great resources um, around hybrid enablement and some commonly used management scenarios for Arc2. So I'll drop that in the chat as well. Um, and we've also got Julia on the call who uh, is working closely on this. So either of us would be happy to sort of hear your feedback or any additional scenarios that you might be interested in uh, interested in seeing live once, once this uh, becomes available. So yeah, just short and sweet, but also always happy to answer any questions that you have after the call too. Fantastic. Hey, what, uh, I just think, quick. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say, Nora is uh, it's uh, very short this time, but probably you can come back next uh, in six weeks and then do a presentation and maybe demo all of this. That yeah, would be fun. I love it. Love it. I, I was just querying, Jody. What can you run through a bit of a summary of ArcBox? Yeah, absolutely. So I can just see if I can share my screen. Oh, even better. I mean, I love a bit of screen sharing. Let's see. One second. It's a PowerPoint. <laughs> cool. Can folks stream my screen? Okay. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So the Azure Arc Jumpstart uh, is intended to kind of provide, as it says here, a zero to hero experience. So you can start working with Azure Arc. Uh, so this includes both examples and guidance and, and FAQs around um, Azure Arc for HCI, Azure Arc for servers, uh, Arc for Kubernetes, and it kind of comes in various flavors. Uh, so what we do is try to provide like as many architecture diagrams as we can, um, as well as some common use cases. For why, uh, for why, if you are an IT pro versus DevOps versus data ops, kind of all the different flavors for Arc that are available. Um, and we know that a big driver for a lot of folks uh, connecting via Arc enabled servers is to be able to leverage some of the best practices from their on prem management. Uh, and we know that one of those scenarios is, is DSC, and there's a, a content gap here right now. So that's one of the things that we're working on, working on filling. Um, and what you can do is interact with the page on GitHub. Um, and we've got a pretty active team right now of maintainers who are more than happy to take any of this feedback and all of the code and, and templates that are used for deployment um, for each of these scenarios and operations. Those are all um, those are all available on the Git uh, through the open source commitment too. So that is a short summary. And if there's anything missing here that you think, I can't believe this is not on the jumpstart, uh, this is a really great time to to have that uh, opinion heard. So yeah, just let us know. Awesome. Where can everyone reach out to you, Jody? Uh, yeah, best is probably over email or Twitter. I'll put both of those in the chat. Um, put in the jumpstart here, and I'll put the latest version release of our agent in the chat too, so that everyone can make sure that they've updated. Awesome. That's fantastic. So people can also potentially raise issues just straight over in the in the GitHub. Yeah, exactly. Like. Yep. Yeah, yeah, awesome. That's fantastic. So we so you're going to come back in six weeks and um and do some demos. That is that. Are we locking that in, Gail? It's six week. Is it six weeks? Is that that's when the next? She said yes. So there we go. <laughs> Julia yeah. and and Jody, you you're locked in. Yeah, love it. This is recorded, so we're in. Oh, there, there we go. go. <laughs> Julia had no say in that, but you know. <laughs> Come off mute now and then. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We've got double commitment. So, yeah, fantastic. Love it. That is cool. Very exciting. Any questions or, or, or from the community? Anyone want to come off mute and, and offer a opinion, question? I saw, the, I saw Ryan on there. <laughs> no. And if if you have questions about uh, what Dimitri has said, maybe uh, we can answer the like whatever we know about, which is not much, but uh, we can try. Otherwise, we can relay the question and then get the answer later. So, very open questions because we've got a few, we've got time. Or maybe even questions not related to what you've heard so far. Are you, where do we get the DSC hoodies exactly, um, Gail? Where are we going to get those? 
you have to be lucky and uh, usually if you come to PS Confie, it's the last time PS Confie you had a few. I think Jody got one and um Michael had one as well and uh whoever was around at that time. I can do another edition if you come to PS Confie. <laughs> There we hear that everyone, anyone going to PS Config get one? Is that is that what is that is that the message? <laughs> anyone in there? Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Cool. Well, do we wanna it sounds like we've got nothing else to cover? Do we wanna turn the recording off and maybe anyone can stick around and ask some additional questions you don't want recorded, perhaps? You know, we sounds good. You never know. Well, thanks everyone. When is the next the next uh session is in six weeks' time? So that will be that's coming up in April, isn't it? It's, it's early April. Do we know off the date, off the top of our head, what's the date? I don't. We'll just say six weeks. Either you will we put announce it, it on Twitter. As usual, yeah, we put everything in the dccommunity.org slash community underscore calls. I'll put the link there. And then there's the next call, uh, next community call. And usually we update this with the date. So we'll try to do that and people can find the you know all the informations again there and we will also publish the recording um on the dc community calls page as well yep and i guess finally last shout out we're always and still in need of community reviewers 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 um yeah we're all so swamped and i think everyone is swamped but if you have a little bit of time want to do a review there are a bunch of PRs out there that that we're trying to get through. So just head over to DSC Community um, GitHub and check out what PRs are open and or, or commit or contribute an issue. But the, the real challenge we have is PR review at the moment. Cool, we'll wrap it up and I'll stop the recording now. Thank you, everyone. Great to see you all.